day, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Together like an army, let's say, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Let us burn holy incense in the presence of the Lord. Day and night, oh. night and day. Let incense all day and night, day and night, night and day. Let incense arise one more time, day and night, night and day. Let incense arise day and night, night and day. You are worthy of it all. of it all for from you for from you are all things and to you and to you are all things you deserve it you deserve the glory one more time tell him you are worthy you are worthy of it all you are worthy Without the instruments, let me hear the church say, You are worthy. Come on, somebody, open your mouth and just tell him that he is worthy of your praise. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord, you are worthy of everything that we can give. For from you are all things, and to you, and to you, you deserve. One more time, you can do better than the Lord. You are worthy. Our God and our Lord, we are saying that you are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, for from you are worth unto you. You deserve one more time. You are worthy. You are worthy. Yeah. You are worthy. Mm. For from. You deserve it. Oh, hey, you are worthy, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy, you are worthy of it all. For from you, for from you I rose, and to you. And to to you, you and to you, you deserve the glory. The glory. Oh.
glory. Hallelujah, Lord, you're worthy of the praise. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. We worship you this morning. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching us from, you're welcome to Beacon Life Church, Nairobi, Kenya. We are committed to shining Jesus' light as we advance the glorious gospel of the kingdom. Our services are on Sunday, 10 a.m., Power Thursday, which is also our midweek prayer service at 6 p.m. You're welcome to log into our life groups, Beacon at Home, Beacon at Work. Don't you hesitate to get in touch with us for the details of the life group that is closest to you. Feel excited to join us on our social media handles to subscribe, like, comment, and follow Beacon Life Church on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's now celebrate the Lord with our generous giving. The m -Pesa Pay Bill number is 535471. You can also give through PayPal by following the link on our website, www.beaconlifechurch.org. For cash, checks, and transfers, our bank details are displayed on the screen. Thanks a bunch for joining us today. Welcome to Beacon Life Church. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. to God forever. Romans chapter number 16 and verse number 26. Do we have it? All right. I was going to quickly read mine here. So let's read here. It says, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. If we concentrate on part B on that scripture there, it says, uh, first of all, that but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to the nations for the obedience of faith. Give me verse number 25 so that we get that context there. Verse number 25. Now to him that is of power to establish or to establish you according to my gospel, according to the preaching of Jesus Christ, uh, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. So there is a mystery uh, or uh, a secret, a mystery that was kept secret since the world began. All right? Since the world began, it was kept a mystery. And we read that again. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and to the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. Let's go to 26 now. It is the mystery that was kept secret since the world began. 26. But now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. All right? So the mystery that was made sacred since the beginning of the world is now made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God. Hallelujah. And is made known to the nations for the obedience of faith. So, the commandment of the everlasting God is made known for the obedience of faith. The mystery that was kept uh, secret from the beginning is made manifest and is made known to the nations for the obedience of faith. Are you listening? So therefore faith is critical for not just your life and your family, but for the nations of the world. Because it has been made known to the nations of all, to all the nations of the world for the obedience of faith. Somebody say hallelujah. It's in the obedience of faith that Jesus is made manifest. Jesus, the mystery that has been kept and covered from the beginning. You understand as I do that from the beginning, the uh, G, the beginning of the world Jesus has been in existence since the beginning and he's been revealed in many sh uh, shaped forms and fashion and uh, 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 if you look through Genesis all the way to the beginning of the New Testament 
the prophets prophesied about him. Uh, 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 Moses talks about him in types and in shadows. And it's been a mystery that has been kept a secret from the beginning. But now it's made manifest, ladies and gentlemen, by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God. And it's made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Glory to God. That there may be obedience of faith in Christ Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Uh, faith outside of God is no faith at all. Faith outside of God is no faith at all. It is simply an existence of some kind of belief, but not really faith in God. So when we begin to talk about the faith conversation or the faith life or the faith lifestyle, we cannot be able to talk about this without conversating in, in Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11 gives us a few highlights that I would like to use in our discourse today. Uh, highlights on that conversation or lifestyle of faith. He begins in verse number 1 and he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Stay in that chapter. We're going to see a few verses there. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So first things first, if we look at verse number one, he's describing to us faith, and he says, by description, faith is substance. And faith is evidence. Glory to God. That strength you have in your heart to believe God is evidence of the existence of God. That's why I said that Faith outside of God is not faith at all because faith outside of God has no evidence and has no substance. Hallelujah. He says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can go uh, word for word and understand that first of all, uh, he, 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 he preambles the verse by the word now, talking about now faith. So we are talking about a now faith. We are not talking about the faith of yesterday. We are not talking about the faith of our forefathers and the faith of the prophets, uh, the faith of uh, uh, those that went before us. Glory to God. We are talking about the now faith. Because you see, every time we live in the faith of yesterday and of the history of the things gone by, the faith of Isaiah, the faith of Ezekiel, what that does is to bring to us religion or even worse, religiosity, which is a form of godliness according to the scriptures that denies the power thereof. So faith in the fullness of its evidence and substance must be now. Because I either believe now or I don't believe. Am I trying to make sense for somebody here? Glory to God. So when he says now, faith is. Faith is now. Because if you don't have it now, then you don't have it. And if you have it now, what you have is substance, and what you have is evidence. It is the substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. There is a realm of things that are not seen, and the only evidence of things that are not seen, my good brothers and sisters, is the faith you have in your heart concerning that matter. Hallelujah. The substance of things not seen, the evidence of things hoped for. Glory to God. So faith is not even for future because hope is for future. But for that hope to be activated in reality is for you to have the faith now because faith becomes the evidence of the things you hope for. Am I trying to make sense? You hope for it. And the evidence you have that what you hope for shall come to pass is faith now. If I don't have faith now, then I don't have the evidence of what I hope for. That means whatever I'm hoping for is in vain. The Bible declares that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Because when you hope for it, you better have faith for it. Otherwise, whatever you hope for can go on until Jesus comes. What is going to make a difference and give life to what you're hoping for and let it begin to be manifest is because faith is going to be the evidence of what you are hoping for and the substance of what you cannot see. You cannot see it, but in the spirit realm it exists somewhere. Hallelujah. 
When you're building a house and planning to build a house, you don't see it with your physical eyes, but in the spirit, it exists somewhere. And in your spirit, you can see it. If you have a dream house, you can close your eyes, eyes right now and see it. I know what mine looks like. Hallelujah. When I close my eyes, I see the fireplace. I can see how large the windows are. They compete with the walls. I can see it. Glory to God. I can see that lovely big kitchen that my wife loves to celebrate. She loves a kitchen that is as big as the sitting room. I see it. When I close my eyes, I see it. Because in that realm that the physical eyes cannot see, only faith can reach there through a hand called hope and begin to draw it. Because faith now becomes the substance of what we hope for and the evidence. Hallelujah. If I tell you I'm going to take you for lunch like I do for so many people, I promise you coffee. I know some of you, your coffees have been pending for a very long time. Look at the door, Flavia. Don't look at me. Hallelujah. But when I tell you that I'm going to take you out, for you, all you need to do is to believe me. Glory to God. And we are going to have a good meal. For me, all I need to believe is to know that my wallet is alright and my card, my visa card is fine. And all I need to go to that restaurant and swipe it and food will happen. I don't have to know how it is cooked. I don't have to be in the kitchen. I don't have to know the name of the chef. I don't even have to know. Do you understand what I'm saying? The moment I swipe my card, ladies and gentlemen, that lunch is settled. So therefore, my card is the evidence and the substance of that meal that I'm hoping for and that restaurant buffet that I'm expecting. I have evidence that we will have it. Glory to God. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So just like money in the natural world can be evidence for anything you want to purchase, faith, ladies and gentlemen, is the currency of spiritual transactions. Of spiritual transactions. If there is no faith in your heart concerning that matter, forget about the existence of that matter. Hallelujah. There must be faith. Because faith is going to be the currency of divine exchange, of divine transactions. The things you're trusting God to do, you better have faith that God will do them. Glory to God. The Bible declares that when a man prays, he says, uh, Mark 11 and 23, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive. That's the most critical part of that instruction. It's not even the prayer. Because if you pray and you don't believe, you are praying in vain. Are you listening? Are you listening? And a lot of us are living in that frame where you're always praying, but you don't believe even about what you pray or in the existence of what you pray. As a matter of fact, you'll be surprised if you get an answer to that prayer. So your believing is even more important than the praying because until you start believing, don't you start praying. Problem is, we have prayed so much without believing. And then we are saying that God does not answer prayer and yet we have taken the believing out of the equation. Am I making sense to somebody here? Can I teach a little bit? Hallelujah. So faith is the substance. Faith is the currency of divine exchange. When a man prays, that man must believe whatsoever things you desire. He says, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have whatsoever you say. So even the saying is not as important as the believing because the saying comes after the believing. Hallelujah. So it's not just about uh, claim, it, uh, uh, claim it and you will have it. You must believe in the believing, the claiming escorts the believing. Hallelujah. If you don't believe, it doesn't matter how much you say it. Come on. Hallelujah. So the divine economy, therefore, runs on the dispensing of faith in God on every matter of human endeavor. Whatever kind of trouble you have in your life, whatever kind of need, whatever kind of strategy, whatever kind of thing you need to present before the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, faith becomes uh, the currency, the dispensing of faith uh, in God over every matter of human endeavor that is the running of the divine economy. In other words, in the spirit, you are as broke 
as limited as your faith can be. What I've just said means that you can be as great as you want to be if you will believe for it. You can go as far as you want to go if you will believe for it. Everything must begin at the believing. From the believing, we'll begin to say it. From the believing, I mean pray, 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 pray. So that, pray, pray, and believe that you receive. Glory to God. Believe that you receive. Faith is yielding to the God opinion on the matter of any kind. Any kind of matter in your life. If you believe on the God opinion on that matter, then pray and stay believing and live, let it stay in God's uh, courts. Glory to God. And see if the Lord will not bring it to pass. What's the God opinion on that matter before you even pray? Hallelujah. Before you pray, for somebody's wife to become your wife or for somebody's husband to, do, to become your husband. What is God's opinion on that matter? Come on. Before you lay your hands on your neighbor's machines and claim it in Jesus' name, what is God's opinion on that matter? Hallelujah. Come on somebody, hallelujah. By wisdom a house is built and by understanding somebody help me. It's filled with treasures. The wisdom and understanding is the, is the ability to receive God's opinion on any matter. What's God's opinion in the pain you have in your body right now? If you know God's opinion, then you know how to pray. If you know God's opinion, then you know how to believe. Glory to God. If you don't know what God's opinion is, then that pain in your body is going to have a party, a rock concert, and rock you with stones until you're out of life because you don't know God's opinion. Bible declares in the book of Hosea, is it Hosea 4 and verse number 6, that my people perish for what? For what? For the lack of knowledge. That knowledge is the express understanding of God's opinion on that matter. There is an opinion of God in your job, in the business you're doing right now, there is a God's opinion. There is a God's opinion. That's why to pray, to understand and have the perception of God's will on matters of your life is more important than to pray that God provide. Hallelujah. Because let me surprise you, ladies and gentlemen, when you understand what God's will is and begin to walk in the dimension and measures of God's will, you may never have to pray for providence because God will provide where he has commanded his will. Can I try to say it another way? God's providence follows what? The vision that he has given. That is the understanding of his will. In the scripture, we have a story of, uh, of, uh, of Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac. Do you remember that story? He's climbing Mount Moriah. And most of us imagine that when he was about to kill Isaac and God said, with, uh, Slay not your son, he, or, or withhold your hand. For behold, there is a ram in the thicket. We think that that ram was created as a miracle in the thicket there. This is what I believe. I believe that as Abraham was climbing Mount Moriah on one side to obey God's will and to do what God has asked him to do, on the other side of the mountain, the ram was also climbing so that they meet at the place of providence because that's where God has guided him to go. Hallelujah. Meaning that your providence knows your address. It doesn't know your address. It knows the address of what God has called you to do and where God has called you to be. Glory to God. So that if God has called you to be here, don't you go over there because you will die of hunger over there and yet there is a lamb in the thicket over here waiting for you. It is possible that if Abraham went to a different mountain, maybe he would have killed Isaac for nothing. Because the ram would have been waiting for him on the thicket on Mount Moriah. It is important that he went on Mount Moriah because what we understand in the Old Testament as Mount Moriah is not just a shadow and a type, 
But in reality today, it is the same mountain that the Greek call Calvario or Calvary in English because it is on the same mountain that Jesus would lift up his son for a sacrifice because Isaac did not have to die because he was a shadow of things that would come to pass. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? You're listening. So Isaac does not have to die because the real son that needs to die is Jesus, the son of God, and not Isaac, the son of Abraham. Hallelujah. So what needs to die in Abraham's time is a ram in the thicket, a lamb which is a shadow because then he would say that Jesus is the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the earth. Am I talking here, talking here, talking here, talking here. So faith, there is no faith where there is no understanding of God's will. Hallelujah. After God has made it clear that this is the way you should go, then have faith for the way you should go. After God has made it clear that this is your husband, this is your wife, then have faith for the manifestation of the things that God has shown you. The verse that we read in Romans 16 declares that he has made according to the commandment of the everlasting God, he has made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. The mystery has been made available and exposed to all nations for one purpose, for the obedience of faith. So our faith, ladies and gentlemen, is as critical beyond what you could ever imagine because by it you are going to achieve by it you're going to overcome by it you're going to see the miracles of god by it you will see the manifestation of god's will in your life it is by faith in god that you're going to achieve and attain anything that you ever think you want to achieve and attain because anything else achieved and attained outside of god's grace and capacity on your life is only worthless living Hallelujah. You can walk by your strength and work so hard. Isaiah chapter number 40 said, they will run and grow weary. Talking about the youth. He says, they will utterly fall. Glory to God. So it's not human strength. Glory to God. But, but, but the battle is not to the, to the race, is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. Neither is bread to the wise. But time and chance happen to them all. That place of time and chance is the exercise of your faith on whatever direction God is giving in your life. Time and chance is what they call opportunity. I believe personally that there is no opportunity manifested into activation that does not demand your faith. Because anything that God asks you to do is going to be bigger than what you're able to do by your strength. Hallelujah. Come on. If you send yourself, you'll send yourself to a budget of a thousand because you know your account has a thousand two hundred. Glory to God. When you send yourself, I mean, that's why you go read the menu from left to right rather than right to left. Glory to God. Because you read and read 85 Ndazi. When they look at you, they think this girl really loves Mahamri from Mombasa. But it is the 85 that has moved you to what you want to ask. But you see, when God asks you to do something, it will be beyond your budget. God does not consider how much is in the account before he gives you an assignment. He doesn't check how much strength you have before he gives you an assignment. He doesn't look at your qualifications before he gives you an assignment. As a matter of fact, while the world looks for your qualifications for you to be qualified, God calls you and then he qualifies you. The world qualifies you and then they call you. But God qual qualifies you, calls you and then he qualifies you. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible calls you able ministers of the new testament glory to god i say hallelujah so the bible says, if you may continue to read let's go quickly to verse number two we are going to run through until around verse number six or number seven let's see how many minutes seven minutes okay let's try number two for by it the elders obtain somebody say obtain Let's go. They obtained a good report. Let's go quick, Donald. Number three. Through faith, we understand. Somebody say, we understand. That the worlds were framed. And by the word of God, so that the things which are seen uh, were not made of things which do appear. Number four. We have already seen that. Let's go to number four. By faith, Abel offered. Somebody say, offered. And to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. 
God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet he speaketh. Let's go to verse number five. By faith, Enoch was translated. Somebody said translated. That he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had had this testimony that he pleased God. Let's go to verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So say please. Hallelujah. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Show me verse number seven. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark. Somebody said prepared. To the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of all righteousness, which is by faith. Let's go. Number eight. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out, of, uh, out into a place which uh, he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. Verse number nine. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him according to the same pro promise. Let's see verse number ten. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let's hold it there for a moment. Number one, by faith, according to verse number two, we obtain a good report by faith. A good report means they are writing a good recommendation about you. Are you listening? A good report means you are having a good offer on life. A good report means they are not slandering you and talking about you and gossiping about you. They are giving you a good report. And how do you get that? The Bible says uh, that by faith, somebody say hallelujah, we obtain a good report. Number two, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Did you hear that? I've had some preachers say that the reason uh, God accepted Abel's and denied Cain is because Abel was a blood sacrifice and it was an animal, a lamb, and for Cain it was uh, vegetables. And if I look at that, I think God would be an unfair God. Because if all I have is vegetables, why would you deny my offering? And the question is, are there other people in the scriptures whose offerings were not lambs and were received? Do we see offerings in the, in the law of Moses that were for sheaves and were for grains and were not blood sacrifice? And would God receive them? As a matter of fact, is the one who commanded Moses that such offerings should be brought to the priest. Glory to God. What am I trying to insinuate here? It is not about whether it is a lamb or a vegetable. The writer is very clear and it says, give me that verse number four. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It was not because it was vegetables. It is because there was no faith in Cain's offering. vegetables or animal or chickens or bloody animals if there is no faith it is not of God if there is no faith the Bible says, whatever is not of faith is sin glory to God are you listening to me are you listening to me are you listening to me hallelujah why would then God accept our offerings today which have been translated into legal tender cash money and checks and swiping that are as unbloody as we know. Hallelujah. So it's not really about the blood of that animal because the only blood that would matter ultimately is the blood of Jesus. But the thing here is, is there faith in the offering that you offer unto God? Because by faith, you can offer a more excellent sacrifice. Someone can offer a million and we will celebrate it. Another one can bring 10,000 and we will celebrate it. Before God, the excellence of that sacrifice is going to be the faith that accompanies it. Faith in God that that is your seed given unto God and he will water it and he will cause it to sprout and he will grant you a harvest. Not 
faith in Beacon Life Church, or faith in Pastor D, or faith uh, because you've given a million. You understand what I'm talking about? It is faith in God. To what degree do you look to God with your offering? Because the excellence of your offering is determined by the faith that you have in God. Hallelujah. By faith, Abel offered a more, uh, a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Abraham offered Isaac. And he said concerning Isaac, that in him shall your seed be called. Can you imagine what faith does to God? That he asked for Isaac and Abraham gave Isaac by faith. How do we know that? Because the Bible says he was also fully persuaded that he that gave it to him would also raise him up from the dead. For that reason, ladies and gentlemen, God granted the promise that in him, Isaac, shall his seed be called. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So by faith we obtain. By faith we are able to offer. Concerning Enoch, he says, by faith he was translated translated of course we understand that that translation was to go to the heavens but in this case whatever thing in your life that needs a translation it is faith in God that commands a translation by faith Enoch was translated for it is written that he walked with God and he was not for God took him ladies and gentlemen he took him from one place to another he took him from the earth realm to the heavenly realm in your own situation whether it's going to be a translation from sickness to health a translation from poverty to wealth a translation from ignorance to understanding it's going to be the force of faith that commands a translation at whatever level your life may be Somebody give me a good amen if I'm talking here. Verse number six says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So let me ask you, what is it that you'll ever do that will ever make you pleasing before God if you're not able to walk in faith? All right? Let me make that clear for you. The only thing that will please God is the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, which you can never give, but he gave by himself. That's how faith comes into play. Because the only way you can please God is to do whatever you have to do in light of the sacrifice of his son. Are you listening? That's why we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because outside of Christ and his offering, none of us can ever be righteous enough to be pleasing to God. Hallelujah. I say, hallelujah. He that knew no sin became sin for us. That's the translation. That's the thing that must move your faith. So that we may be, therefore, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am righteous not because I work righteousness. I am the righteousness of God because I believe in Christ Jesus. It is not because I don't sin that I'm a righteous man. But because I'm a righteous man, I don't sin. What makes me righteous is not my works and activity. What makes me righteous is my acceptance of Christ Jesus as Lord and God of my life and the empowerment of his blood over me. Somebody say hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must first of all know that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Must believe that he is and he is a rewarder. Hallelujah. For without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. That is faith, ladies and gentlemen. To believe that God is, is faith. And to believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him is faith. Number one, we believe in the existence of God. But then number two, we believe that God is a rewarder. People believe in the existence of God. But they believe God is such a mean God, ready to kill you anytime, waiting for you to make one mistake and crush you for the rest of your days so that you walk with a broken leg. Because after all, you met God in your life at one point. He is a rewarder. As a matter of fact, if your reward is going to be evil, it's because it is evil that is being rewarded. 
That's the reason for the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That those that have denied the existence of the Son of God and the shedding of His blood, He said their place is the lake of fire. Because we must believe that he is and he is a rewarder. Lift your hand if you believe it. And begin to believe God for some rewards in your life, in your lifetime. That you will be rewarded because God is a rewarder. You will be rewarded because God is a rewarder. I say you will be rewarded because God is a rewarder. Your children will be great. Your business will prosper. Your ministry will be established. Your dreams shall come to pass because God is a rewarder. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Glory to God. Let's finish it out. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. Prepared a, 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 an ark. In other words, the works of our lives, which are the works of God's assignment on our lives, for Noah it was building the ark. Those are done by faith. Say by faith, Noah prepared. Come on, say by faith. I prepare for my journey of life. Say by faith, I walk with God and I believe on His grace in my life. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. Concerning Sarah, he said by faith, she received strength to conceive seed. Hallelujah. The strength to conceive seed. Hallelujah. You may not understand what that means until you understand that the Bible says concerning Sarah, she was past uh, childbearing age. Was that the husband or the wife? He says she could not conceive seed and her husband was past childbearing age. You remember that? But now here he said it is by faith that Sarah received strength to conceive seed. Remember, he says in another scripture, she was not able to conceive seed. So the things you're not able to do, by faith, you receive the strength to do them. Hallelujah. Do you know that it takes conception of seed for your vision and your purpose and your life vision to come to pass in your life? And there are people that don't have capacity, spiritually, strength to conceive seed. Because of whatever happened in your life. Because of your past. Because of your unbelief. Maybe Sarah was unbelieving. Maybe she was barren for whatever reason that may be. We don't know why she couldn't have a child. And at 99, ladies and gentlemen, she, she, she has given up on ever expecting that something like that will ever happen. And yet by faith, the Bible says, she received strength to conceive seed. You will be surprised the things that you can do by faith in God. You will be surprised. You can live a life larger than your parents. I say you can live a life larger than your parents. I say you can live a life larger than your parents. In Africa, the children receive from their parents a piece of land so that they may divide it up together. Right? And their children who can't wait for their parents to die so that they get that one acre in, uh, in uh, <laughs> wherever your village may be. Come on. But by faith, you can receive strength to conceive seed. That your parents don't have to die for you to be able to own something. You can conceive seed by the strength you have in faith in God. That you will bring forth a vision that your parents will live to see with their own eyes. Somebody say hallelujah. I say say hallelujah. If you look, uh, if you go further, he said that by faith, Joseph, Jacob was able to bless the two children of Joseph. You could be following me, Don. You could see where I am, the verse that I am at. It is by faith. The Bible say that Jacob, before he died, yeah, he blessed the children of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And he did that by faith. What am I trying to say here? Even that patriarchal blessing coming to the next generation is released by faith. 
You can't do it by human endeavor. You can't do it by human ingenuity and understanding. It is by faith that you are able to push an agenda of a generation. The word bless here is the patriarchal blessing, which is a prophecy concerning your future. In other words, the MD version says that by faith, Jacob was able to prophesy the future of his grandchildren. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It is by faith that we prophesy. I don't think somebody is getting it here. But by faith, we can speak into your future and align your destiny that you will not be lost, my God. Hallelujah. That you'll come back to the path of righteousness and you will work the works of God in your life. Invoked by faith in Jesus' name. If you read further, the Bible says that by faith, Joseph, when he was dying, he prophesied that the children of Israel would leave Egypt and go back to the land that God promised their fathers. By faith, you can align the destiny of a nation. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. So we can see it all in this uh, Hebrews chapter number 11 that the Christian life cannot be lived outside of faith. It's a faith conversation. It's a faith lifestyle. I know you grew up in the church. Your mother, your father has been a Christian. And for that reason, you were in the church. Let me talk to you, baby. You need to begin to lift up faith in your heart for anything you're going to achieve. There are some things that your daddy's faith is not going to break for you. Hallelujah. Your father blessed you, but you need to bless your children. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. If your mother is dead and gone, they will not bless your grandchildren. You need to take capacity. You don't have to wait to become 45 to understand these things. Am I talking? Am I talking? Am I talking? I know you are only 22, but you can begin to speak to your husband. He's not yet here, but by faith you have a husband. That's how faith calls the things that be not as though they are. It is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't have your children yet, but you can bless them before they even come conceived in your womb because faith gives the power to conceive seed there are some seeds that are just conceived it, nobody even understands what it happened even the one conceiving did not realize it is happening that is Leah you remember Leah Leah like my good friend the prof likes to say that if you said hi Leah, she was pregnant. Anytime you said hi Leah, she was pregnant. On the other hand, you have Rachel, who does not have strength to conceive seed. She cries and says, give me children or I die. Ladies and gentlemen, when she finally has a child, her firstborn is Joseph. And when Joseph is born, everything is changed. Joseph was child number 11. But it turns out he became the firstborn. He carried the blessing Reuben was supposed to carry. Hallelujah. And I don't want to confuse your understanding. But if you read the scriptures properly, he was the one supposed to carry it. Because his mother was supposed to be married first. And uh, Laban switched. So Leah ended up being married. And Rachel comes into the picture because the husband has to work another seven years. We don't know why she was pregnant. But when that womb was finally opened by the faith that causes conception and seed to be conceived, Joseph was born. The man of God told us the other day, according to that chapter in Genesis, the Bible says, and this is the story of Jacob. And the next word is Joseph. And for the rest of the book, you don't hear anything else but the story of Joseph. Faith is such a powerful force of existence and creation. We see it from the book of Genesis. That ladies and gentlemen, a Christian that does not yet understand the activation and the work of faith in their lives is a powerless Christian. Your prayer is only as powerful as your faith. Your walk, your Christian walk is only as powerful as your faith. I mean, to the degree that you walk with God to believe that you will do the impossible. Yes, you will see the impossible. Romans 4 and 16, the Bible says, it is of faith that it may be by grace. 
you may never have seen that before. The New Testament teaches a lot about grace, how we are saved by grace through faith, and how, I mean, the grace of God, the all-sufficient grace of God, but the Bible says it is of faith that it may be by grace, meaning where there is no faith, we cannot even access grace. Are you listening? That salvation that we receive by grace, it has to be through faith. And where there is no faith, you can't access the grace. Powerful grace, all sufficient grace, it is hinged on the activation of your faith. Because where there is no faith to believe, say bye to the manifestation of that grace. If you read Romans 5 and 2, the Bible declares, give me Romans 5 and 2. Show me Romans 5 and 2 quickly. We read 4.16, it is of faith that it may be by grace. Look at Romans 5 and 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Are you reading together with me? What does faith do? By whom, talking about Christ Jesus, we have access by faith. Are you listening? It is access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. So we stand in the grace and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That access is given by faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Without faith, we can access grace. Without faith, we can't rejoice in hope. Hallelujah. Give me Ephesians 3.12 as we wind it out quickly. Ephesians 3.12. Lift it up so people can see it. Ephesians 3.12 Listen to what it says In whom, talking about Christ Jesus We have boldness And access and confidence By faith in him Somebody say by faith in him Read the verse again with me In whom, Christ Jesus We have boldness We have access, we have all confidence By faith in Christ Jesus In other words, without the faith in Christ Without the faith of him, without the faith of God, which is faith in Christ Jesus, we can't have boldness, we can't have access, we don't have confidence. Am I talking the faith conversation? Am I talking the faith life of every believer? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I know you're still a young man, but you can walk in faith. I know you are middle-aged, but you can walk in faith. You can believe God and exercise faith in Christ Jesus. I'll give you a few verses here quickly. Number one, Romans 5 and 1. By faith we are justified. You will not have time to run through them. Catch the ones you can. Romans 5 and 1. By faith we are justified. Romans 11 and 20. By faith we stand. 2 Corinthians 1 and 24. By faith we stand. 1 John teaches that by faith we overcome. Because this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Somebody say hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. By faith we walk. Bless God forever. Colossians 3 and 9. We are blessed together with faithful Abraham. By faith, we are blessed together with faithful Abraham. In other words, when we stand in faith, the faith of Christ Jesus, we access every blessing that was rested on Abraham, the father of our faith. We can quote Isaiah and say we have been cut from that rock. We have been hewn from that rock. Abraham is our father and Sarah is our mother that is only accessible to the Gentiles by faith. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Scripture teaches that the just shall live by faith. The just, the believer, has no life outside of faith. Writing to the Corinthians, he tells them, we live not by sight, but by... Come on. We live not by, but by... What does sight do to the natural life? It brings vision. You are able to see where you are going. That's exactly what it does, faith, to the spirit life. By faith, you can have vision. You can see where you are going. And you can see the promise of God in your life. Because you walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 14 and 23, it says, Whatever is not of faith is sin. Can you imagine that? Anything that you are trying to do, in your own life that is not attached to your faith in God according to the scriptures it is sin 
I know they are good works, they are beautiful works. You are really trying to be kind to people. If there is no faith in your kindness, it is sin. The reason your gifts are different from the Red Cross gifts is because yours have faith. The reason your offering is different from any other person in any other religion that brings money to whatever altar they go is because yours has faith in Elohim, Jehovah, the God of the heavens and the earth. Say hallelujah. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Galatians 3 and 26, For ye all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's one of my most favorite. Hallelujah. Say it together with me as your memory verse. Say, for ye all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. I don't hear faith in your voice. We are going to say it again. One, two, three, go. For ye all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Do you understand the power of those words? That you are a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It is your faith in Christ Jesus that makes you a child of God. He came to his own and his own received him not. John chapter number 1 and verse number 12 says, but as many as received him, that is faith in Christ Jesus, he gave them the power to become the children of God. Ladies and gentlemen, ye all are the children of God by faith. Lift your right hand and say, I am a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Say it one more time. I am a child of God. A child of promise by faith in Christ Jesus. Let not devil ever take that away from you. I say let not your history take that away from you. Don't let any uncle, any auntie take that away from you. Don't let your government take that away from you. It doesn't matter what they say. They can close the churches if they want. You know what? You all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. All we need is faith in Christ. And that is the evidence of our sonship by faith in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's read Hebrews 11:32 as we finish. This is the last one. I'm going to read it slowly because it's full of a lot of heavy uh, experiences here. Explaining faith in the lives of men and women of God. Listen to verse number 32. I'm going to read up to 35. Go with me if you can. He says, and what shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon to tell of Barak, to tell of Samson, to tell of Jephthah, to tell of David, to tell of Samuel and of the prophets. And he begins to say the few that he can because time is failing. Ladies and gentlemen, when you begin to walk by faith, time will fail. Oh, I hope that's a prophetic word for somebody here. When you begin to walk by faith, time will fail because faith operates beyond the realm of time. Hallelujah. Things that were supposed to happen to you when you are 75, we can call them into time. And time will crash down on them. They can be made manifest before you are 40. Somebody say hallelujah. Some of you think you can't get married until you are 40 something. We can call your marriage and you see it at 25. You see it at 22. Parents, if your children come at 22 and they say they found somebody, Don't act like you have a lot of theology to explain. Hallelujah. Let's leave that for those that have ears. All right. Let's hear what these guys did. Verse number 33. Who through faith, this is what faith does, subdued kingdoms, wrote righteousness, obtain promises stop the mouth of lions listen to what faith does ladies and gentlemen through faith go back to 33 subdued kingdoms wrote righteousness obtain promises stop the mouth of lions can i prophesy each of these things in your life that you will subdue kingdoms 
Whatever is a kingdom standing against your life, by faith, not by power, not by might, we will subdue kingdoms. We will work the works of righteousness. We will obtain every promise given of God over our lives and we will stop the mouth of lions. Somebody say hallelujah. We will stop the mouth of lions. When you say lions, most of you are thinking about Masai Mara and you are thinking about the lion family there. Bless that one. It has nothing to do with you. Paul said in the, in the book of Acts that when he was in Ephesus, he fought with beasts. Some versions say lions in Ephesus. There are men around your life and around your family that the devil has chosen and anointed them with a calling to become beasts and lions in your life to desist your progress and to deter the management of God's plan on your life. We will subdue kingdoms. We will work righteousness. We will obtain promises and we will stop the mouth of lions in the mighty name of Jesus. They will stand up to you and they will not be able to gain say or resist. Are you listening to me? They will take you to court and when the judge asks them to make their presentation, they will have nothing to say because their mouths will be stopped, not by power, not by might, but by faith in Christ Jesus. By faith in Christ Jesus by faith in Christ Jesus. Let's go to 34. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the age of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. Turned to flight the armies of aliens. That's the force you carry within your heart. That's the force of faith in your hands. Somebody say hallelujah. You will quench the violence of fire. You will escape the age of the sword. Out of weakness you will be made strong. You will wax valiant in fight. And you will turn to flight armies of aliens. Hallelujah. Verse number 5 says, 35. Women receive their dead race to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Do you know that even when you die, you will die by faith? If you were a believer in Jesus Christ and you walk by faith in the Son of Man, even your death will be subjected to faith. Come on. You will not be those that just die like everybody shocked. What happened? Straight bullet. They were chasing Mungiki when they shot. It is you. It cut. I mean, the bullet misses Mungiki and catches you. I mean, people died. They, they were driving, and then I don't know what happened. This, a, a car came off the road and hit three people, and so and so died. The child of God. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say, By faith, I will live and not die. Disease will not take me. Accident will not take me. Torture will not take me. Persecution will not take me. Hate will not take me. Suicide will not take me. I'm a child of God. I live by faith. Hallelujah. 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 The psalmist said in one place that you are my God and you shall be my God even unto death. Can you imagine? The life we live, we live by faith. And the death we shall die, we shall die by faith. Pleasing unto the Lord is the death of his sins. Isaiah prophesied. In Hebrews 11 and 6, he said without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that death outside of faith is not pleasing to God. Oh boy. Oh boy. I hope some things were spoken in your heart this morning. I hope there is an acceleration of faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I call you to that mountain of the exercise of your faith. It may be as little as a mustard seed. You will speak to the mountain and say, be thou.
thou move and you shall have whatsoever you say. So you are not shortchanged and you are not embarrassed and you are not weak. If you are in faith in God, you are stronger than you think. You are bigger than you think. You are larger than you think. You can achieve more than you could ever dream, ladies and gentlemen. That faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And I'm here to prophesy you will overcome in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, stand on your feet. Let's receive it. Let's receive it. Let's receive God's opinion on your life. Let's receive God's opinion on your health. Let's receive God's opinion on your money. Let's receive God's opinion on your future, your hope, your destiny. Shaka basubra. Lift your hands above your head and take a moment to receive from God. I give you one minute. Just receive from God. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Activate the faith in your heart. Activate the faith in your heart. Believe God for the impossible. That power of faith is stronger than the coronavirus. That power of faith is stronger than the cancer cells. That power of faith is stronger than the HIV virus. That power of faith, ladies and gentlemen, is the force of your life. The force of faith is the force of your life. Shagabado sabra. Shagalagalagalagalaga. Rekelabadosa. Rekelabadosa. We submit high blood pressure to the force of faith. We submit diabetes to the force of faith. We submit every allergy and reactions, spirits of asthma and all manner of manifestations of cancers, blood cancers, cervical cancers, prostate cancers. In the name of Jesus, we submit you to the force of faith. The force that moves mountains. The force that opens the seas. The force that causes water to flow in a dry place. Every lack, every situation of lack, every situation of poverty, every situation of need, we submit you to the force of faith. To the force of faith. To the force of faith. The issues of this ministry, the issues of this work, the issues of this altar, in the mighty name of Jesus, we submit you right now to the burning force of faith that overcomes the world. Our lands, our properties, our buildings, our peoples, our families, our ministries, our gifts, our anointings. In the name of Jesus, we submit you all to the force of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we declare that we love you. We declare everlasting love for you. Oh, that's our faith, Father. We declare that we love you. And we declare everlasting love for you. One more time we say, declare your faith, Lord, we do. Father, we, we declare that we love you. We declare, we declare our everlasting love for you. Oh, oh we Father, we, we declare.
declare that we love you and we declare our everlasting love for you. We declare, we declare, we declare our everlasting. We declare our everlasting. We declare. 